Aloha, this is Professor Wes Porter. This is uh, Federal Rules of Evidence, part of the introduction section. And in this video, I really just want to offer two points of view, two vantage points for uh, looking at objections. One is from the side of the opponent. One is from the side of the proponent. The uh, two sides that I argue you should be concerned with uh, when, when tackling an evidentiary issue or, or crafting evidentiary arguments. First, if you look at this picture on behalf of the opponent, the one who's sitting at trial charged with objecting, the one who has to stand in opposition of the proponent who's putting on evidence, who's presenting evidence at the time. And the way I would think about it is the proponent is going along doing what they want to do. They're riding their bike. They're on their path. They're putting in the evidence. They're asking the questions they want to get. They're listening to the testimony that they plan. They're putting in evidence sponsored by the witnesses that they call. Uh, so th they're riding the bike, they're cruising along, and in our system, in the American uh, system, we put it on the opponent to object. So one of the ways to think about it is objections are essentially a stick in the spokes of the proponent. You're trying to cause them to slow down, cause them to um, uh, you know, consider instead of just plowing forward, and, and it's really your job to get in the way. And when thought of in the most purest sense, uh, you know, you can make, if you know the rules of evidence and you have a command over the rules and you know how to apply the rules and you take the time to apply the rules to the, to the facts in the case, it can really be a stick in the spokes that causes the proponent to fly over the handlebars and sort of never return. So think about it. It is your job. You are the one charged with. The judge does not do it for you. There are such things as sua sponte objections, but it's not something you should rely on. We rely on the opponent to object, and you've got to think about getting in the way of the smooth ride that the proponent plans to be on. Conversely, I, I always talk about, especially when I teach evidence, I always talk about evidence from the perspective of, a, of the proponent that they're mere hurdles. Uh, you know, the opponent uh, can put up objections, can throw objection flags on the field at any point. Uh, but they're really just hurdles that you as the proponent have to overcome. You have to disengage from that exercise with your right hand of asking questions of a witness or trying to put in documents or other evidence through a witness and navigate hurdles. Respond to the court and say, here's why I can overcome this hurdle. Here's why I can overcome this hurdle. Um, so if you think about it as a path that you're going to continue on and it's really you know, who's the opponent that day? How many hurdles do they construct? How many hurdles do I have to clear? And another way of thinking about, you know, this, if you have an understanding of the rules, you'll understand that some rules, uh, rule 401 that describes relevance is a speed bump. It's not even a hurdle. If you understand the purpose for which you're asking every question, someone wants to throw a penalty flag, wants to throw the relevance flag throughout trial, you disengage from asking questions of the witness or putting on evidence. You turn to the court and you say, you say what you're doing, what's the evidence you're listing, and why it's connected to something that matters, why it has some tendency uh, to make um, something that matters in the trial more probable than it would be without that evidence. It's a rule designed for you to just easily clear, easily uh, get over. So it's a speed bump. And other rules, you know, you just have to understand the, your, your presentation options at trial. That is, if an objection gets in the way of doing it one way, do you have a detour? Do you have an alternative route? Do you have another way to get at that evidence? But my mindset as the proponents, especially when armed with the rules of evidence, is no matter who I'm going against, they're just going to put up hurdles, speed bumps, and maybe if they're good enough, a detour or two, but I'm going to get as the proponent where I'm going. I'm going to put on the witnesses. I'm going to ask the questions that I want to ask, and I'm going to get in the evidence that I need to put on the closing that I want. So. Uh, as the proponent, I'm really thinking about this as I, I know the rules of evidence are there, but I've thought about them. So when they construct hurdles, the opponent constructs hurdles or has speed bumps or maybe gets in the way to the level of a detour, I'm still going to get to where I need to go.